8 December 1915, a Belgian boat left Plymouth in the UK, transporting four short bombers with its equipment in crates uh, and a handful of airmen and mechanics. They were shipped to Africa, where they were supposed to destroy a German boat that controlled the entire Tanganyika Lake with its naval gun. The majority of that boat is a story in itself. This is the boat to care for Hudson. <coughs> It was assembled in Germany in 1913 and shipped in parts to Africa. We built on the spot prior to the war. In early 1916, the Belgian convoys arrived in the Congo and crossed the Congo, the colony, vertically from the coast of the lake, some 1,000 miles. They used trains and roads, which of course mostly black manpower. They assembled the aircraft and managed to get the airborne, which was a lovely piece of determination in itself. Belgian air crew actually did succeed in damaging the boat during a bombing attack. Um, this is Albert de Burger, the uh, commanding officer, pilot Henri Bahaga and observer Julian Collignon, who was responsible for the bombing the bomb. Um, the boat was damaged and here with this, uh, they secured the control over the lake because the ship could not be repaired uh, at the site. The Germans deliberately sunk their ship in order not to be taken by the Allies by the Allied troops surrounding Kigoma where it was stationed. And in the 20s, the boat was salvaged, and since 1927, it is used, still being used as a ferry between Congo and Tanzania under the name Liemba. So this is a picture of, 19, of uh, 2000, and so uh, it is still used as a ferry. Uh, this is the seaplane uh, um, uh, base, where you can see British cockades on the rings and Belgian rotors, stabilized. Probably an English one. Probably for somewhere. Um, this is an aerial picture of Lemur Airfield, which is incorporated in a modern day Google Maps photograph. And you can see that nothing has changed throughout the years. And the only thing that's not there any longer are the hangars and the aircraft and the football ground over here. Again, some statistics. They show that the number of offensive patrols now exceeded those of the UK missions, and that the total of war flights increased with more than 1,500 flights. A soldier, Captain Nevis, commanding the maintenance and repair park, constructed the refined version of the Farm F40, and the first two models, of which uh, the second, the GM2, flew at the front, were powered with the Leron rotary engine. Whilst four other GM types had more powerful Hispano Suiza water cooled engines. Although officially stated that on November the 1st, 1916, one Hiso power GM was on strength at the front, there's no evidence of this, of, uh, at least I couldn't find evidence of this. And on the contrary, because uh, Bishop of Chagény Robin, who scored their fourth combined victory February the 1st, showed him standing in front of GM, uh, GM2. GM3 was a single-seater uh, night fighter. Mm -hmm. yeah, was <laughs> it was mounted with two machine guns and a 30 centimeter diameter searchlight in front of the uh, in front of the aircraft. It was flown over Calais and Dunkirk in operations against German night raiders. GM4 flew at the front from spring to late September 1917 when it crashed, and GM5 was also at the front in 1917. It was used by Belgium's most experienced photographer, Jules Jamot, who is not holding the camera, but he's a pilot. <coughs> Nineteen seventeen was the year that the Belgian army finally received full attention from the Allies. And I'd like to mention here that Belgium was not an Allied country. This may sound weird, but on account of its neutrality, Belgium did not even fight a the war. They fought a campaign. Um, which in the end, of course, counting casualties was, uh, was the same. But the country fought alongside the alliance with its own commanding officer in chief, which was King Albert, without any control of its army whatsoever by an allied general. They could only give him military advice, but mostly the king kindly refused. It <laughs> 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 
that the sudden attention of the Allies in 1917, however, could be called a charm offensive. Because of the oncoming big battles in uh, Flanders, later known as Third Ypres or the Battle of Fashionville, the British Army needed the assistance of the Belgians, because it was planned that once the Fashionville which was taken, and that would only take a couple of days, according to General Hague, <laughs> um, the Belgian army should advance in close connection moving north. This way surrounding the German held harbors at St. Bruce and Ostend because this, those were the two uh, 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 submarine harbors. King Albert agreed for the, with the huge plan for the first time during the war, but he told General Hague that his army was not equipped to accomplish this offensive, and as from April, the British started delivering for the Belgian air service and uh, updated aircraft such as the R8, Soviet Frutter, Soviet Pub, and Soviet Camel. The French followed the example, and they supplied the Belgian air service with scout aircraft, the Leopard 23, Spat 7, and Hangio. The better aircraft soon translated itself into more aerial victories, and by that time, Fernand Jacquet had become the 101st man of all nations to achieve A status on February the 1st. And most likely he scored his 50 Belgian Dolce and uh, two push of the Thais, uh, push of type 2 seater. Edmond Jeffrey became an ace on July the 3rd by claiming two victories within two minutes, bringing his score to six, and here it was Belgium's uh, top scoring ace. And on August the 21st, André de Meulemeester became an ace. Um, but in doing so, he was hit in the shoulder by the return fire of the German Schlachtflieger observer, and he was put out of action for a month. <laughs> he was officially being credited to his opponent as well. Now, de Meulemeester, uh, his, his nickname was Mister. Uh, he was not so much of a mystery though, but he had a Flemish name, and as the French could not pronounce his name, they called him No Mister, and they just made him a mystery. Uh, <laughs> uh, <coughs> but perhaps the most important observer of the bar was King Albert. His name would appear, but anyway, this is the king. And here. He was taking his AKC 40 on March 18, 1917, on his maiden flight over the front, and he flew there for half an hour. In July, Jacques de Meus was on a team flying, you can't see him, um, was on a team flying the king over the front in a Soviet further. And later in the war, spent 11 pilots, 100 <coughs> on the, the volunteer in the first, first days of the war. Um, he became the king's personal pilot flying on a regular base to and from the front during the final offensive in 1918. The king boarded the spat on the beach in front of the royal villa, where he lived. So the Belgian photographic reconnaissance was of a high standard. It was appreciated by its neighboring armies, but it needed reorganization. And from now on there were two men placed on the ethical command, one in Sheffield.